Welcome to Headshots by Peggy Presents. I'm Peggy and I am here with Frank Collison and it is going to be an amazing interview. So say you. <laughs> Frank, I'm pretty excited to have you on my show. Well, I hear you have not been doing any uh, of these interviews for a while, so you're a little rusty. I'm a little rusty, so be nice to me. Yeah, I took, a, <clears throat> for the first time in five years, I took a three-month break. I don't know what's wrong with me. Wow. So you have been acting since you were six months old. Give or take, but I, I wouldn't say the six-month-old was more like a, a prop. I was a prop or a meat puppet, as they say sometimes. Yeah. Now the, no, the story was um, my parents were at a summer theater right after I was born in Granville, Ohio, which is where they met at Denison University. It was a tent theater. I don't know the production, but the story I was told, so, so I heard was that um, I was carried on as a baby. And that was my. Do you think you had to audition film. for that, or do you think they just? Uh, I think I just, nailed uh, it. You think I you think just nailed it? Yeah. yeah, that's pretty awesome. But 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 honestly, you really have been acting pretty much your whole life. This has been this is your your whole life passion. Haven't we all though? I mean, <laughs> we all wear that mask, right? <laughs> yeah, various roles. Yeah, um, I was just telling your your daughter or uh, Lev uh, that. Um, um, what was I telling her? Oh, about um, my mom getting me out of school to um, to do um, tech theater stuff. And she also would say uh, to me, um, you better not miss a performance or rehearsal unless it's, it's, a, it's a funeral and it better be yours. It better be yours. <laughs> so yeah, I was doing uh, shows. Um, my mom was directing me. My mom directed me in... Um, um, uh, she directed me, someone directed me. Yeah, she directed me in um, a William Sroyan play called My Hearts in the Highlands. And the embarrassing thing was that she cast my sister as my girlfriend. <laughs> that was pretty traumatic. It wasn't, I mean, we were kids, so it wasn't really any big deal. It was just, uh, she was a little girl that was a neighbor and that I guess I had a crush on her or something. So that was my first struggling with it as an actor you had to figure out mm -hmm. how to how to find that in you yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny so I think what would be really fun to talk about Frank is you've you've been series regular you've been on film and theater I mean you've you've really done it all commercials mm -hmm. um but you also raised a family um in the industry and I think that a lot of people struggle with with that. So, do you want to talk about your kids and like? Of course, I do. They all they, all your kids turned out. So, like, you had to have done something right along the well, way, right? You know, um, I think it's even harder. Um, the people I really admire are people who have been able to um, make a living in theater and have a family because. Theater requires you to move from place to place. You might do a season in Milwaukee, and then you might be in New York or Boston. And that's really hard if you have a family. And with film and television, you know, um, I had the fortune of, um, let's see, Claire had just been born. That's my, my oldest. Um, and um, I think, yeah, uh, Eliza was, we were pregnant with Eliza. When I say we, my first wife, Sheila and I, um, and I got the phone call that this pilot I had done, uh, Dr. Quinn was um, gonna be a series. It had done, tested very well. And um, so to have a, a series, and I had never even auditioned for a pilot. First pilot I auditioned for, ends up being a series. I and mean, you hear about people auditioning for 15, 20 pilots, nothing ever happens with any of them. But this was my only pilot that I ever auditioned for and it ends up being six years work. And so by the end of the six years, we had three kids, uh, Eliza came along just as the show started. And then Gabriel was born um, a few, 
few years later, my son. And um, so the kids would say, you know, their whole idea of dad was daddy's going to the horsies. <laughs> and they'd come out to the ranch sometimes, shot up at Paramount Ranch um, in Agora Hills, just about um, 40 minutes north of, of LA. And um, so, you know, they were actually in a couple episodes too. Um, so to have that um, as a way to start a family was really great um, because I, I had an epiphany um, before I got married. I was living in Echo Park and um, uh, it was a Sunday, hot Sunday after evening. And uh, I went down to the, the park where the lake is down there and there's paddle boats and stuff. And there were all these families down there. And they were enjoying themselves. They had picnics and they were spread out on, on blankets and everything. And I said, you know, I was pushing 40, getting close to 40. I, and I was saying, what, what am I waiting for? I, you know, if I wait for everything to be perfect, I'll never have a family. So I decided, you know, that's what I want to do. And so I, I, I met Sheila and we got married and started a family. And uh, I think, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think being in a career in film and television is that much different. Maybe in the sense that uh, you never know exactly when your next job is going to be, but every family, you know, they struggle with worrying about, you know, oh, my kids need braces or, uh, you know, college and things like that. But fortunately, I was able to get enough work that, uh, you know, continue to make a little, I would say a middle class, you know, living. And we moved up to a middle class neighborhood with soccer and, you know, that sort of thing. T-ball. <laughs> and uh, so um, I was fortunate in that way. So the early years of your kids' childhood, you were a series regular. So you kind of had a, a schedule probably yeah, more so I, than, than a lot of actors. You kind of yeah. knew like I'm working today and we'd go off on vacation. We went to Yellowstone and drove across the country. And I knew that I, you know, three months I'd come back and go back to work, go back to work. And, yes. uh, so yeah, there was a security there that, uh, um, that you don't have all the time all the time i mean that was the only series i've had i've done so after that you know <laughs> it is back to the whole auditioning and yeah and, and I, booking when you book. i had um, relatives in in um, back in uh, in michigan who didn't understand the business and they said after the show ended they said so what's your next series and i said well uh, yeah you got to go down to the hiring hall and you sit yeah, on exactly. a bench down there and then someone <laughs> says uh, hey i need uh, someone about six three uh play a comedy role Kind of a on, character actor, anyone interested? Oh, you, uh, you know, yeah. it doesn't work that way. <laughs> so, you know, no, since then I haven't ever had a, a series again. I've done some recurring roles, but uh, it's just, you know, bits and pieces, bits and pieces. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you consider yourself a character actor, right? Is that what we would- Aren't we, we all, would, again, we, aren't we all? I hate that thing. <laughs> yeah, I've never I feel like a, I'm probably a character actor, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> It would be an insult. A character? <laughs> okay, you're not an ingenue anymore. I hate to break it to you. But uh, yeah, I'm a character actor. Uh, when I was at uh, training at ACT, we had a wonderful dialect coach, Charles Hallahan, he's Irish. And um, he took me aside one day after class. And he says, or he just casually said this. He says, uh, you and I will work. And I said, what? He said, yeah, because we got the mugs. I said, the, the mugs, we got the mugs. He meant our faces. Yeah. And um, that was the, the transition from theater to, to film was um, that you learned that, that, you know, the roles that you were cast in in theater, you know, I was playing like Puck in Midsummer Night's Dream and all sorts of stuff I was wildly wrong for. But in film and television, the roles you're going to play are much, you know, more specific and narrow but you know i think that uh i was told oh well you've got an interesting face which was a way of saying <laughs> you're not handsome but you're <laughs> i asked my dad that once who he you know he acted and he um he was studying acting right before he was drafted and went off to world war ii and i said dad did you think of yourself as handsome because i was trying to feel my way into the whole idea of 
what I would project on film. And he, he paused and he said, different, it's different. <laughs> so that's what I felt like. And, and you know, uh, it's, it's okay, you know, uh, in the sense of uh, realizing that you have a mug and uh, yeah, you're not, you're not a leading man. It's okay with me. Well, I think that uh, what he said was true. You know, the average person is going to work more than the the ideally like you know hottest man on the cover of People magazine or whatever. You know, um, just you're gonna you're gonna yeah. work because I that's mean, what we we need people that look like people. But I think how important is it to like really understand what your archetype is and your character type and just own it. Just like, hey, this is who I am. Just own it. Yeah, I, I, I think that's what you have to do. You have to just uh, say, okay, that's how I'm seen. That's how people see me. I mean, I have, you know, I played, I played uh, doctors and lawyers, but I played a lot of homeless guys. I played a lot of hillbillies. Um, I was raised in the South and had it born with a Southern accent. So that's easy for me to bring back. But, um, you know, um, everyone, is a character. So I just feel sorry for those. I have a, a friend um, who's very good looking and he wanted to play character roles and he would go in all scruffy and grow his beard out. <laughs> They'd say, no, yeah. <laughs> no, no, you're a leading man. You, you, don't, you don't look, you don't look that scruffy enough. No, you can't, I'm not buying that. It. No, I'm not buying that. That's funny. So what is your, uh, you, you've had, uh, and this may be really tough, but what would you say your favorite your favorite experience was like well maybe it was the most fun or the most freeing or just that's the... kind of a personal question <laughs> on, I, film. Uh, on film oh on film on, yeah. oh I, I was going to ask you talk about theater or film either, film, either yeah, i would say brain. um from as an actor even though i didn't have a lot of scenes i mean a lot of lines um working on the village uh, M. Night Shyamalan movie was a great experience because we did something that I have not done, had not done before or since, which was we had two weeks of rehearsal. Um, so we had the cat, great cast, you know, Sigourney Weaver, Bill Hurt, uh, Joaquin Phoenix, um, Adrian Brody, um, on and on. Um, and uh, we spent a week um, out in the Pine Barrens living in, in tents. And then we uh, went out to historic farms and learned stuff like um, how to, sh uh, how to um, yoke an oxen. Wow. <laughs> Sigourney Weaver and I shore, shore, learned how to sh shear a sheep together. And uh, that was fun. That was fun. So did you use electric shears or? Oh, God, or no. No, this is a period, sh period yeah, show. So no, we so used the old the rusty. Uh, you you know, I lived scissors. on the Navajo Indian Reservation for, for 13 years. And, Did you know, you? They, they, they would, you know, shear the sheep. But and... with electric? No, no. Oh, with really? The, with, with the, the hands? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't easy. Yeah. yeah. So that's... Uh, but anyway, the, the experience was yeah, great. Um, and um, I was there for about two months or so, something like that. And um, we, we worked um, in... We... Uh, did a lot of improvisation before we started filming. Once we started filming, no, no improvisation. No. But uh, Knight tends to storyboard his shows pretty tightly, which means it you know, storyboard is where you take each scene and you create um, drawings and you know, oh, this is what the shot's going to be. So, but also Roger Deakins was the DP and he's incredible. I mean, you know, he did that. He did Oh Brother, that, which was also fun. Um, that was a fun shoot too, but I I just like going on location. It's a it's a paid vacation as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, yeah. Where's the coolest uh, location that you shot at? Because you 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 and Laura do workshops in Alaska. You've gone on location all over the place. I I feel like you've. Mm, I I've only I've never gone out of the country on oh, really? location. No, well Canada. Yeah. 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 Uh, oh, I don't know. Uh, Actually, again, uh, um, the um, uh, uh, I'm just blanking on the, the movie I just talked about, <laughs> showing my senility. Um, 
the village was shot uh, in this gorgeous area called Chad's Fort, Pennsylvania, about a mile or so. The set was about a mile from, from, from Andrew Wyeth's house. And if you've seen his paintings, um, just a gorgeous area. It's wow. re- right near the, uh, the Amish country, beautiful area. Beautiful that's area. really cool. Yeah, it was, that's, it was that's nice. Really cool. yeah. I, I, that's really interesting. So what, um, what you said that was your favorite film. So what was your favorite moment on, on a theater stage? Um, well, now it would be embarrassing and I don't think I'd ever get cast in it, but I did uh, play Arthur Coppett's play Indians um, and I played Sitting Bull, which nowadays you would get in big trouble for casting a, a Caucasian guy like me as Sitting Bull. But, um, but historically it was Caucasians, Italians that, that yeah. were cast in. Well, it was in interesting on, on to, to sort of a side note, uh, when we were working on um, Dr. Quinn, we had a symposium over at the Southwest Museum and um, Larry Sellers, who played uh, Cloud Dancing, uh, who is actual Cheyenne Medicine Man, and he played a Cheyenne Medicine Man on the TV. So, I mean, that was, he, um, there were a lot of young Native American actors who came to the symposium and they were going, and he was sort of lectured them. He said, hey, man, don't just walk into the casting room and say, hey, I'm right off the res, you know, you got to cast me, you know. He said, no, that's not going to do it. You, you got to have your chops as an actor. You got you to mm-hmm. have your skills. He said, there is a guy on the show <clears throat> who is, uh, I think he's chief black, I forget one of what character, he's Greek. And the casting directors at that point, I don't know how they do it now, aren't even allowed to ask you your, your, uh, uh, your ethnic background. They can say stuff like, so tell me about Tell me about your growing up. Well, I lived in uh, right. in North For- uh, South Fork, D- Dakota. You know. Oh yeah. Okay. But um, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, uh, doing a sitting bull. Um, the local Miwok tribe loaned me a headdress to use for the for the play, and uh, I was very nervous about using it in the show. And they said, uh, "Be careful with it." They brought it in a, you know, like a case with a lock on it. Uh, and I said, I will be. He says, yes, be careful with it because if anything happens to it, it would bring death and destruction to the tribe. A lot of pressure there. So, but I j- we, sh- we, did the, we did this at a summer theater up which I helped start up in the Sierra Nevada up at, um, uh, near, um, um, not too far from Yosemite. Um, and it was a gorgeous area and we had a stream right behind us. And um, some of the uh, people who were in Indians actually lived in the teepees that were part of the set uh-huh. during, during the rehearsals and the, and the performances. So it just, I just, it was really, <laughs> to use overused word, organic connection to that, that role. Even though in the play, if you know the play, it's really about um, how Buffalo Bill had this Wild West show and they, Mm-hmm. really exploited the whole Native Americans that were in, in that Buffalo Bill Wild West show. They were right. cartoon cutouts right. of what Native Americans really right. are. So, Which is, is still a fight today. But in the play, <laughs> there's the opportunity yeah. for Sitting Bull to be, to be real and not be a cutout. Yeah, that's cool. At least I remember that. Yeah. It's being a great experience. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. So what tip would you think that um, you would like to give the viewers um, to help them um, with their pursuit of their acting career? Oh, the viewers, you mean like actor viewers? Actor viewers. Actor um, viewers. I would say get a life. Um, I, I just view um, an acting career. I mean, we, we recently had... Um, people, a lot of people over working on our house and um, they show up, they have their tools, they do their job, they do it well and uh, they get paid. (laughs) And that's what I do. I show up, I have the tools that I've developed and I've trained, Um, but I go home and I have a family and uh, I have other interests. And, uh, you know, I like to garden, I like carpentry, I like backpacking. Um, find something else that you do because um, Orson Bean, who was on Dr. Quinn with us, he says, the acting we do for free 
It's the waiting we get paid for. <laughs> there's a hell of a lot of waiting around. Even if you're working, there's a lot of waiting. I once worked on a show and I waited. I was on location up in Eureka. I think I waited 10 days for the weather to be right before they shot the scene I was in. So get a light. And um, if you don't let it hold you back from having a family. Yeah. yeah. Get, and I, I like that get a life because not only does it just help you as a, you know, obviously your mental and emotional mm -hmm. state, but it having a life actually brings to your acting career because you have more experiences to draw on and you have more, yeah. more things to, you know, you felt and you've experienced and you've yeah. lived. So you, it makes you, yeah. um, it actually helps your career while you're, right. for, you know, while you're walking away and just having a life, right. it's, it's actually building to that toolkit. Right. I, on Dr. Quinn, I had a scene in which um, my, the, the actors playing my mother died. And I was on camera for that. And my mother was very much alive at that point. And, um, but I, I was so, um, um, I was thinking, well, how, how do I, you know, what, how does one react if you're in the room when your mother dies? And, um, um, but I had been in the room when my father had died. Um, and I remember thinking, it's, I had an acting teacher who had said uh, that she talked about having a black box, um, like a flight data recorder. It says you have to, you want to keep those things that um, resonate or are powerful in your life and keep them in that black box because you never know. And um, she said she was having this argument with her soon to be ex husband. And she remembered saying, I must remember this good stuff. But I remember when my, my, my father died, um, my reaction, I was in the room and he was in hospice, so we knew he was going to die, but um, I didn't predict how I was going to react. I reacted in a way that was different than what I expected. And I thought, well, I don't know if I'll ever use this, but I do know that people in emotional places don't always react in the way that you think they would. You know, they might laugh or they, maybe they would cry, maybe they wouldn't cry. So um, it allowed me to be a little, I think a little freer in, in understanding that um, humans are so complicated that um, you can't predict necessarily yeah. how, how you're gonna react. And that's hard to do. It's hard to do as an actor because I tend to get into a, make a decision about how to do it. And, and then I get locked into that. It's hard to break free of that. And, and to try, you know, when the, when the director says, hey, do it again, let's do something different here. It's a great opportunity. You don't always get that, especially at my pay grade. If you're the star of the movie, yeah, they'll do as many takes as you want. But for me, it's like, oh, we got it, moving on. <laughs> you go, wait, wait, could I, could I? No, no, that's fine, that's fine. Because <laughs> they got lunch, you know? We gotta, we gotta go. That's funny, yeah. but that's true. I think that's that's really good, um, and I like I like the black box because, you know, there's so many experiences that you have that you know, that that are that take you by surprise. You know, there's mm -hmm. things that have happened that I'm like, wow, I, I didn't expect to react that way. Like, you know, you see something like this happen to someone else, or you see something like this happen on TV and in your head, you're like, oh, that's probably how I would react. And then when, when a similar situation happens, it's like, wow, I, I, I didn't cry or I didn't feel, I just felt an emptiness. I didn't feel anything that was outward expressive or whatever. And, you know, so mm -hmm. those are good to, because humans are very, complex and you may react today differently than you would tomorrow because yeah. you know just different things are happening so yeah. i think that's that's why it's always amazing when you're watching things and something that you don't expect happens you're like oh that's that looks honest it looks authentic mm -hmm. but that's not what i expected you and know, i think that's the key right there is it, having that that, that box to that's on. magic for actors and i don't i can't say that's happened that many times and and in my work, but um, where I've really, truly surprised myself and 
and something has happened that I didn't plan, uh, didn't expect to happen, and it, and it just comes out. Because um, when you're on a, on a film set, there's so many people around and so much um, pressure to get the shot and move on. Um, but it's a real challenge. I don't think um, if you, until you visit a movie set, I don't think you really understand, a viewer would understand um, that you're just surrounded by this massive amount, number of people and equipment. And, um, and then you suddenly have said, and action. And uh, you're supposed to be uh, crying because your mother died, you know. Yeah. Um, it, it, to, to get into that place, um, and in theater, you know, you have, it's much more organic. You're, you're doing it straightforward in chronological time and, and film, you might be doing your death scene first and, uh, <laughs> you know, so it's, it's, um, it's a, di a whole different skill set, I think, yeah. working on film. That's, yeah. that's really good. Yeah. Can we well, talk about my kids or we have any time? Left? Oh, I talk about your kids. Go for it. <laughs> no, I was we saying can about, always talk about Frank's about have, kids. About having a, a family. Um, so we moved once uh, about the time I got the series to a middle class neighborhood. You know, everyone around us was lawyers and businesses and things like that. And I mean, there were some industry people in, in, in the neighborhood, but uh, for the most part, it was just normal people. You know, go to the YMCA, the gym and stuff. And um, so Claire was born first and uh, she is now um, uh, in her third year as a resident, as a surgeon. Um, and um, then Eliza was born two years later and she just uh, graduated from law school, passed the bar exam. She's now in the Washington DC area working for an immigration law firm. And then Gabriel, the youngest, um, just got married. He um, was um, graduated from the Naval Academy and uh, so became a pilot. Opted, chose to become a Naval aviator. He's got his pilots uh, sold and, uh, and is now training on uh, helicopters, um, search and rescue. And just married this beautiful young woman named Sierra and uh, they've started a life together. Um, the interesting thing is, this is the thing I want to mention about actors. You said, you know, the other thing I might say is that um, that acting requires a discipline. It's not, um, it's a discipline of, um, well, you, you have to show up and you have to be right connected with the material. And it's not, it's not a job for slackers. Um, but all three of my kids. Um, were in cross country and track, and they they would stay in school. They would do school, and then they would be in in practice, uh, track cross country practice, five or six o'clock. They'd come home sometimes with a ten pound bag of ice, put it in the in the the, the tub, soak themselves in ice water because they were so sore from running. Then they would have dinner. Then they would go back and they'd do their homework till like 10 or 11 at night. And I think the discipline they got mm -hmm. from cross country and track really served them in academically. Mm -hmm. They did, they all did very well academically. Um, so that discipline um, is something I think that people don't necessarily associate with acting, associate with being, I don't know what people think of actors, but uh, I don't think the first thing they think of is, oh, that's a very disciplined person. And, and it really is. I think working, if you want to be a working actor, um, you have to really be disciplined. And it's, it, you know, in, in any entrepreneurial thing, which acting is, you're your own boss. Nobody's telling you you have to do this. Yeah. But if you don't, you're not going to get anywhere. If you, if you don't work on your craft, if you don't practice, if you don't know how you look on camera, if you don't, if you don't take the time to know how to do your self tapes and get a good good audition tape ready and you know if you don't take the time to do all these things then you have a great hobby and that's really fun but you're not yeah. going to to make a life like you've made yeah. a life with this and clearly because of the discipline you've you've shown your parents were both 
actors and directors and in the well, my industry. mom was a director and, and, and my dad was a writer and, a, and, and an actor, actor. Yeah. so they were you know you were kind of raised in and in an environment where where you even if it was subconsciously you saw them getting up and doing things and making sure things happened well i saw how hard my dad worked on yeah. writing he he rewrote his first play like seven times wow the other thing i would say mixed in with the discipline as far as film work uh, is um you need to um establish a relationship that you are reliable and disciplined and easy to work with because um there's no place for um dare i say assholes well <laughs> i shouldn't say that, there's a lot of assholes in the business, but um you know people don't want to hire assholes um, no. um you know you might when you're the star of the movie you you're allowed to release that inner, I don't even want to say the word anymore, but, uh, you know, the, the, I think that if you establish a reputation as being reliable, and uh, as I said, you know, like the guys who showed up at my house and, and did the work on the house, uh, you respect good craftsmanship. Yeah. And uh, you, you get known as a, that you, you, you do your craft well, and you're reliable and disciplined. Um, and they don't mind hanging out with you on set for and 12 yeah, hours. Yeah, and you, you know, when they say, uh, when they say a first team, you're there. You're not off wandering around somewhere. You know? yeah. And then you know, you know your way around a set. You learn how to behave on a set, what to do, what not to do. Um, and you just have to be a good team player because it's a huge team when, when you work on film and television. I think that's what um, surprised me the most when I started getting introduced to the industry is how many people it takes to make this happen. I on, mean, on Dr. Quinn, there were people I worked with for six years. I was never quite sure what their okay. job was. <laughs> they were there every day. But uh, no, there's a huge number of people. And um, Crazy. Um, I said this to my daughter. Uh, well, I, actually, I said it to Gabe, my son. He was... Um, while he was at the Naval Academy, he spent a summer on part of the summer on an aircraft carrier in Bahrain. And he was talking about these uh, enlisted guys who were mechanics on the jets. And I said, yeah, you know, in a few years, you're going to outrank these guys. He's a lieutenant now. But you treat them with respect because they're the ones who are repairing the aircraft that you're going to be flying. And I said to my daughter, who is now a surgeon, I said, you treat the nurses with respect because a they know more than you because they've been around a lot longer and if you treat them with respect they're they're going to in kind give you the help you need exactly. uh, as a surgeon so in any occupation you treat everyone you work with with respect and you're going to get respect back again and i that includes for me i remember the first day lining up for lunch <laughs> and uh, I got at the end of the line and uh, and the uh, second AD came and said, oh, no, 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 no. Th these are all these are all extras, background people. No, you get to the head of the line. I went, no, no, you have to because we have to get you back into the works beforehand. There's a reason why we do this. And I felt un uncomfortable about it, but there was, I guess, a reason why to do it. But that doesn't keep you from being um, polite and respectful and to everyone. Right, because the show without extras is really boring. <laughs> um, I, we, we've seen yeah. a couple of those during the pandemic, <laughs> um, but, um, you know, as, as, a somebody that's, that's been behind a camera pretty much my entire life, it blows my mind when people are rude to camera people and DPs, because it's like, really? Like we literally can make you look like crap by doing this, like change the camera yeah. angle this much. And, yeah. oh, you look like crap. Hmm. Yeah. No, it didn't change the scene, but boy, do you look ugly. Right. <laughs> like, just think about that. Like we. Yeah. <laughs> you know, one of the things I don't think I've done well enough is to learn uh, uh, what it is that does make you look good. <laughs> I guess as a character actor, I don't care, <laughs> you know, but um, it, I think if you have an opportunity to go in and watch an editing session, um, you'll learn a lot, especially if you have uh, interest in getting on the other side of the camera and directing and stuff, um, is that you see what's cuts together um, 
I think that's some sorcery that I just am, mm-hmm. am always in awe of is the editing room. It's just, it blows my mind how they can take yeah. something, you know, even something that I shot and make, you know, this yeah. magic out of it. And then as an actor, if you're aware of the editing process, you know that you have to do something that allows the editor um, choices. I think I remember Dustin Hoffman or someone who was asked, what is his job? And he says, my job is to make the editor's job easier. Um, and that includes, um, as an actor, um, the beginning of the shot and the end of the shot um, if you keep the life of the character in the shot before, if you have the life of the character in the shot before you start rolling and you maintain that character until they say cut, then um, you never know when they're yeah. going to cut. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's magic. It is. Yeah. It's magic. Well, Frank, I think we could talk all day. But Let's, we should probably we should edit this out. We, nah, we'll <laughs> leave it in. You know, everybody, it, all of my viewers know that we that that my podcast is about rambling, and that's the magic of it, right? Rambling, rambling, rambling along. <laughs> but it is fun. It's fun. I mean, I don't. Uh, I'm not much one to talk about the the business. I just figure out to do. I it. think you talked about the business this whole time. I think you gave well, us some true, really good business tips because you asked me. But I'm saying in. In yeah. general, in my life, uh, when I come home, uh, I'm not. I think our first conversation was you showing me pictures of your kids on your cell phone. Probably. That's more. That's far more important to me. Yeah. <laughs> Would you like to see some pictures? <laughs> we'll, we'll throw some up on the screen now. <laughs> um, yes. That's... Oh, and Laura. I, I... She's extremely important, too. I didn't talk about Laura at all, but we, we've been... Uh, uh, comrades in arms. We've actually acted together a few times. Um, As husband and wife, even. And, uh, and that. My name is Earl. What yeah, else? Yeah. What else? Yeah. What else would people have seen? Uh, the two well, together? no, we've done plays and read yeah. a lot of plays and readings together. Not, not much television. Uh, but uh, anyway, that uh, she is a, a rock and she has a whole different way of working than I do. And I respect that. And uh, I do respect that, Laura. I really do. <laughs> as someone who has been, has filmed you in a couple of different projects, independent projects that you guys have worked yeah. together in, um, it is really fun. I'll just say this to watch your process and to watch Laura's process and to think in your head, oh, this is not going to work. <laughs> and it's magic. You guys are always beautiful together. And uh, and, okay, if you say so. <laughs> it is. Um, but you do both have completely different approaches to things. Yeah. And sometimes you like to tell each other your approaches and why you're right and why, you know, why mm. the, each I, of you are right. And I, I just try not to do that. Sometimes it's hard. But how is that? That's something we really should talk about. See, mm. I, I thought feel we like... were done. But no, no, okay, no. We, we just revamped. We have okay. restarted. So. Oh. Merrick and I are we still rolling? We're yeah, still, we're yeah, still we're still rolling. We yeah. just see all the, the production yeah. crew here, which is me. Yeah. Um, but uh Merrick and I have like we complement each other, but we you know, like I do his self-tapes, I do his headshots, mm-hmm. I you mm-hmm. know, read for him, but I'm not an actor. Mm-hmm. So there there's there's and and the same, like he thinks he knows what he wants. Mm -hmm. me to do you know he sometimes tells me how to do the job that I've done literally my whole life and that he you know so we have that but we never but you and Laura are actually you have the same job different roles in the same job Mm -hmm. so how is that living with another actor like well I'll just the one example that pops up in my head is uh, nowadays we all do self-tapes we used to go in Mm -hmm. audition but now we tape at home which means your spouse is usually one off camera or somebody reading the lines and pointing the camera at you. And I just um, am really hard on myself. Uh, and she was shooting, we were shooting something the other day and then we'd done four or five takes. And she said, oh, I think, I think these are all, all good takes. And I was like, really? You know, I would keep shooting and shooting, but um, I needed her to tell me yeah, we've got it because I wasn't that confident that 
of what I have done. Because anyway, so that's that's helpful. Um, and I don't know. I guess it's just that you, uh, if you're both actors, you you um, would like that bumper sticker. Not tonight. I've got a rehearsal. You understand. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, the pressures and um, uh, Laura tends to be much more. Um, I think she goes deeper than I I do. So I'm more like I can just like um, turn it off and turn it on again. Kind of. I think I work more from the outside in, and she works more from the inside out. That could be that because she's a female, and that could be. Could probably. be. Who knows? Yeah. But uh, um, so we both have to respect. Uh, the, the way the other person works um and uh it, it works it works maybe one day well actually we're we're doing uh this pro these projects um uh there's two characters called cookie and lou i'm lou she's cookie and we shot one one episode which yeah i Peggy i, I actually dp'd that and project. uh yeah and we're we're shooting another one that's um uh called dishwasher and uh any couple who's lived together long enough knows that uh, how to load the dishwasher is probably one of the most important um, decisions you will make in your in your marriage, um, and how to compromise on how one loads the dishwasher. So uh, we're working together on this, and um, we had a rehearsal the other day on Zoom with the director, and she said, "That's the best you've ever done on this this best rehearsal," and I really did feel. A uh, real connection with Laura that I don't always feel in, in working with other actors. That um, because there's a very I don't want to spoil or alert, give much away about it, but there's a something happens in the in this this piece. It's short, um, where uh, we really connected, and I forgot that the camera was there, and that's not often. <laughs> Usually, I'm pretty aware the camera's there, yeah. which is. Uh, when actors say, oh, I forgot the camera was there. Not usually. Yeah. yeah. So, so I, know the, I know the camera's there right now. We're because we're right looking at it. We're looking right at you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I hope you enjoyed listening to all this blather. I, I think it was good. I enjoyed, I enjoyed the, I the conversation. I, I enjoyed the interview. See, I'm glad that I took a break because I came back all fresh and fun with amazing guests. So right. um, you're on Instagram. I am. See, that's Not, another thing. Laura's very good at that. I, yeah. I don't even know. Yeah, I think I'm on Instagram. So in the description, I'm going to have all your links so that people oh. can follow you and tell you how awesome you are and how great it I'm was. I'm not to very see good you. at social media, uh, <laughs> but yes, I, I have a Facebook page as an actor yeah. or frankcollison.com. There it is right there. There you bottom. go. Yeah. It's running right there. Yeah, it's running right there. It's like, Credits. It's like but magic. yeah, I guess I have an Instagram account. Yeah. So I'll find out I what follow it is. you. I haven't touched it in months, but if you want to go to my Instagram thing, it's probably got a pictures of my kids and, and uh, probably and trees and but maybe some of Dolly, our dog Dolly. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's the other thing. I guess if you're an actor, especially if you're starting out, you must have be good at social media. That's Don't listen to me because I not. That's a, that's the a thing. Um, Merrick's publicist said either get good at it or get off of it. Keep it private. Or, uh, or get good at it. Um, so, I had a conversation for another day, I guess. But anyway, Frank, thanks so much. This You're was welcome, a lot of Peggy. fun. This was a lot of fun. You're welcome. All right, guys. Um, make sure that you share this. Follow me on all of my social medias. And um, I am now officially a podcast. So, make sure that wherever you listen to your favorite podcast, you follow this particular podcast. Because apparently, that helps a lot when I have followers. I've on podcast it's a thing so follow me um most importantly have an amazing week i'll see you next week text or call today so that we can get you effective headshots that you can use as part of your marketing strategy headshots by peggy how can i help you